Live from New Delhi, you're watching DD India News R, India's voice to the world. Hi, I'm Madhul Thomas. Coming up in the next hour. Winter session of parliament begins. Uh, Indian Prime Minister asks parliamentarians to have an in depth discussion on bills and ensure best suggestions. I am going to say that the government is going to be able to do it. The government is going to be able to do it. The government is going to be able to do it. The Navy Day to be celebrated at Sindhu Durg Sea Fort in the Indian state of Maharashtra. Prime Minister to attend Navy Day function. Cyclone Mikjuam intensifies into a severe cyclonic storm. Indian city Chennai flooded, cars submerged, airport operations halted amid severe rain. An Indian stock market buoyed by state assembly election results. Sensex zooms 1,000 points. Nifty crossed the 20,500 point mark. Gold hits all time high. The winter session of uh, Indian Parliament begins today in the lower house of Parliament. Minister of Education and Skill Development and Entrepreneurship Dharmendra Pradhan introduced the Central University's Amendment Bill 2023. The bill makes way for setting up of a central tribal university in Telangana that will increase access and quality of education in the state. In the beginning of the session, Prime Minister Narendra Modi was applauded for the party's big win in the three state elections on Sunday. In the upper house, Rajya Sabha, the question Mahar was conducted after urgent matters were raised with the permission of the chair during zero hour. Travel more accessible to common man, but there are problems. Provisions of the scheme document. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi spoke to the media ahead of the commencement of the winter session of parliament. While talking to the media, Prime Minister lauded the election results that came out on Sunday, giving a striking win to the BJP in three. Indian states. सभी समाजों की, सभी समूहों की, शहर और गांव की महिलाएं, सभी समाज के, सभी समूह के, गांव और शहर के युवा, हर समुदाय के, समाज के किसान और मेरे देश के गरीब. ये चार ऐसी महत्वपूर्ण जातियां हैं जिनका एम्पावरमेंट उनके भविष्य को सुनिश्चित करने वाली ठोस योजनाएं और लास्ट माइल डिलीवरी इन उसूलों को लेकर के जो चलते हैं उन्हें भरपूर समर्थन मिलता है सांसदों से आग्रह करता हूं लोकतंत्र का यह मंदिर जन आकांक्षाओं के लिए विकसित भारत की नींव को अधिक मजबूत बनाने के लिए बहुत महत्वपूर्ण मंच है मैं सभी माननीय सांसदों से आग्रह कर रहा हूं कि वो ज्यादा से ज्यादा तैयारी करके आएं सदन में जो भी बिल रखे जाए उस पर गहन चर्चा हो उत्तम से उत्तम सुझाव आए वेल द यू नो एट दिस पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम द पार्लियामेंट विंटर सेशन ऑफ पार्लियामेंट बिगनिंग uh, especially with regards to important bills that will be deliberated upon uh, in this particular session of Parliament.
the Rat Sabha chairman uh, reconstituting that eight-member panel uh, of uh, vice chairmen with 50% women MPs. You know, the big developments on day one of this particular session. Well, for more on the story, we've got Vikas Satya, correspondent tracking parliament for us uh, joining us uh, this afternoon. Uh, Vikas, looking from a perspective of, uh, you know, how this particular session plays out. We've seen the last two sessions, you know, almost going uh, with not any constructive discussion taking place in both houses of parliament. Do you see a similar trend or do you see, you know, parliamentarians following the prime minister's, you know, constructive advice that he gave ahead of this particular session of parliament? Uh, right, and also as far as the uh, uh, productivity is concerned, we saw that in the uh, in the previous session there was much ruckus from the opposition on various issues. Uh, though today, uh, Prime Minister, uh, in the very beginning, uh, uh, reiterated that uh, uh, whatever mandate has been given by the people, after that, opposition should realize that whatever kind of uh, negative politics they have been doing, uh, it is not going to benefit anyone, particularly the opposition. So he again uh, asked opposition parties to come with a constructive mindset with a positive mindset and uh, take part and uh, do participate in various important legislations uh, anil particularly this in this uh, session we will see uh, three very important bills which are going to replace our criminal justice system existing uh, laws uh, ipc crpc and indian evidence act these three bills will be replaced by new legislation and other than that uh, uh, another important bill which is re related to the appointment of chief election commissioner and uh, two other commissioners uh, that bill is also uh, is also expected to be taken up in this particular session. So the, uh, if as far as the business is concerned, very important issues are pending before the parliament. And uh, okay. again, uh, as far as the opposition stand is concerned, uh, it is very unlikely that uh, uh, we, we will see any kind of change of heart because uh, uh, whatever advice have been given when we are, when we talk to one of the senior Congress MPs, uh, he he was not very uh, he, he was not very convinced about the. Uh, smooth proceedings in both the houses, particularly, and uh, some contentious issues are also there, like uh, uh, ethics committee report, uh, which is related to uh, TMC MP Mahua Moitra over allegations of uh, taking uh, taking cash uh, uh, for raising a query in the parliament. That ethics committee report is also uh, to be taken up by the Lok Sabha, and uh, and other than that, uh, we have also uh, saw suspension of some some Rajya Sabha. MPs in previous sessions, that is also a, an issue where opposition MPs may create ruckus. Uh, so what will be the approach of the opposition on uh, several important issues? We will be able to know once the uh, business starts. Though in the morning there was some disturbance from the opposition MPs and uh, in the morning in the Lok Sabha particularly, uh, Speaker clearly, uh, clearly in fact cautioned uh, opposition MPs to stop uh, bringing placards in the parliament, he clearly said that uh, this is not, this is against the rule. Uh, no placard will be allowed inside the house. After that, we saw a smooth functioning from uh, uh, zero hour till lunch break in the Lok Sabha. Uh, meanwhile, uh, an important bill, which is related to the setting up of a, a first tribal university in Telangana, uh, Central Universities Amendment Act, this, uh, uh, Amendment Bill, uh, okay. has already been introduced in the Lok Sabha. So, uh, after lunch, what will be the stand of the position? We will be able to know in uh, in a very short while. Okay. Vikas, also bring us uh, the latest, especially when it comes to, you mentioned the, you know, the Ethics Committee report in Lok Sabha uh, with regards to Mahua Mitra and also, you know, Danish Ali. Uh, is there any update on these two? Uh, well, uh, in fact, as far as the Ethics Committee report is concerned, it was expected to be taken up uh, before lunch. So uh, uh, what we have learned from the senior opposition MPs that government may not uh, place this report today or uh, tomorrow, maybe day after tomorrow, it may, be, it may be placed, but it is not officially have been announced by the government or, or by the officials, uh, but it has not been uh, tabled yet, though the number of uh, uh, tabling of this particular report was item five in the uh, business, schedule, business list of the Lok Sabha. Uh, but uh, we saw that uh, the other business took place, but report has not been tabled yet. Uh, there, is, there has been no confirmation from the government side, side uh, when, will be, when they will table it in the uh, Lok Sabha. Uh, but uh, 
the report is ready. The text committee report will be tabled soon. Okay, one quick word. You know, this looking at this particular session that takes place, uh, the winter session till December 22nd, 15 sittings, uh, you know, that are likely to take place. You know, what could be on the top of the agenda when it comes to important bills that are going to be deliberated, discussed, and also passed? As far as the important bills are concerned, as we were talking earlier, that three important bills uh, which are going to replace our criminal justice system, these three bills, in fact, have been introduced uh, have been introduced in the House in the last session. But uh, opposition MPs and government was also of the view that these bills should be uh, sent to the Standing Committee of Home Ministry, which will receive comments from the from the opposition parties and other. Uh, uh, and, and other experts and uh, uh, common citizen uh, uh, as well, so that uh, those reports have been prepared, those reports are ready, and we expect that these three bills uh, will be in, will be tabled in both the houses and will be discussed and uh, likely to be passed in this session itself. Okay, we'll leave it there. Thank you and appreciate you joining us this afternoon on News R. Shifting focus to election results and Mizoram, uh, whose counting was deferred till today, the Zoram People Movement, that's ZPM, has won 25 seats, leading with has won 25 seats as we speak. The Bharati Janta Party has registered a victory in three Indian states uh, on Sunday. This particular vote counting is underway in India's northeastern state of Mizoram, which has got 40 seats. Counting it is taking place in all the assembly constituencies as we speak, the 40 assembly constituencies. And clearly numbers there, looking at the numbers, uh, especially in the 40 uh, you know, counting halls that are taking place. Uh, as we speak, the Zoram's people movement, 25 seats they have won. A total of 27 seats is what they are looking likely to end with. They are leading in two suites. So that's the big uh, news. That's the big development that's coming there uh, from the northeastern region. Also, Bharatiya Janta Party winning two seats there in the Mizoram elections. That's uh, just been uh, uh, the, where voting, uh, where counting is currently on. And the results, uh, the consolidated results could be seen uh, uh, in an hour or two. So celebrations there uh, in uh, the in Mizoram, the northeast part of India, the Zoram's People Movement, ZPM there, uh, managing a healthy lead. 25 seats, they have won two seats in the lead. So they look likely to end up with 27 seats there. And in a 40-member assembly, look certain to uh, form the government there uh, in the northeastern state of Mizoram. Meanwhile, talking about the other three states where counting took place on uh, Sunday, Super Sunday it was. It was a big day for India's ruling Bharatiya Janata Party as it marked a landslide victory in three key states out of the four that went to polls recently. As India heads towards general elections next year, state election results are of utmost importance. Meanwhile, the incumbent uh, Chief Minister of uh, Indian State of Rajasthan, Ashok Gehlot, resigned from his post after the results. Elections have always been a festival in India, the largest democracy of the world. Sunday has been a much happening day as results of four state elections, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, Chhattisgarh and Telangana were declared. The results brought much cheers for BJP, the ruling party in India. Out of the four states, BJP is poised to make governments in the three, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan and Chhattisgarh. Let's begin with Madhya Pradesh. As per the data from India's pool body, the BJP has got a clear majority in Madhya Pradesh and is set to come back to power. The state's incumbent chief minister, Shivraj Singh Chauhan, has been in power for almost four consecutive terms. <laughs> Now moving to the northern state of Rajasthan, the land of royals. Reports suggest anti-incumbency was high in the state. The same reflected on the results announced on Sunday. People have ousted the ruling party Congress. BJP got a landslide victory in Rajasthan. 
BJP also emerged victorious in Chhattisgarh, defeating the incumbent Congress. BJP has attributed the party's big win to Prime Minister Narendra Modi, who spearheaded the campaigns. The state poll's results carry much significance as India is heading towards a general election next year. Political pundits believe these results set the tone for the mega electoral battle of 2024. Abhishek Bose for DD India. Well, global media commended the win as an expansion of Prime Minister Modi's dominance. They further added that the outcomes were vital ahead of the Lok Sabha elections in 2024. Well, moving on, uh, especially to the cyclonic storm that's further intensified into a severe cyclonic storm over the southwest bay of Bengal and moves nearly northwards close to India's southern state of Andhra Pradesh coast during forenoon on the 5th of December. Severe cyclonic storm to hit the region with a maximum gusting wind speed to 90 to 100 kilometers per hour. Well, the National Disaster Response Team of India has deployed close to 21 teams there on the ground in the coastal regions there. The rescue and relief teams of the Indian Coast Guard, Indian Army, Indian Navy, along with the ships and aircrafts have been kept on standby in view of the impending cyclone there in the Bay of Bengal. And the latest there on that heavy rains throwing normal life out of gear, especially in the southern city of Chennai. And... Uh, you know, it's expected, this particular cyclone is expected to cross Chennai on December 4th. Heavy rainfall, strong winds being witnessed there in many areas of Tamil Nadu. The heavy rains have also led to water logging in many areas, roads, tree fall incidents being reported, wall collapse also being reported, especially from Chennai. Well, DD India's correspondent Jay Singh joins us uh, on the phone line from uh, Chennai. Jay Singh, uh, good afternoon. You know, how does one see this particular severe cyclonic storm? You know, when is the landfall likely to happen? And uh, along with, uh, you know, the southern state of Tamil Nadu, which other states need to be on standby, need to be on alert, especially when it comes to handling the aftermath of this particular cyclonic storm? Well, uh, Anil Thomas, the situation is... Uh uh, really uh, a little grim and uh, the, the, the rain is not uh, relenting, it, it's uh, lavishing the city, lapping up uh, since last uh, evening. Uh, um, Chennai and its suburbs are getting pounded by torrential rainfall and uh, it is coupled with the strong and gusty wind because the cyclone is uh, coming closer and closer towards the shores which is just 90 kilometers away from the shores from Chennai. And uh, the cyclone is expected, it, is, it has already intensified into a severe cyclonic storm and it is moving along the coastline, parallel to the coastline towards Andhra Pradesh. And the landfall is expected to be in the forenoon tomorrow, in close, close to a city called Bapatla in Andhra Pradesh, which is in between Nellore and uh, Machuli, Machuli Patinam. Okay. Uh, the the uh, situation in Chennai is uh, uh, quite grim to the extent of uh, Chennai airport getting shutting, sh shut down until further orders and the state government has announced a public holiday for today and tomorrow in Chennai and its adjoining districts like Sengalpattu, Tiruvallur and Kanchipuram. Okay. There is a huge water logging. Yes. Okay. The public transport is out of case. Okay. Uh, Jay Singh also bring us the latest, especially when it comes to the highways that Chennai connects to, especially Kolkata. And also with regards to, you know, many examinations that are around the corner at this point of time. Uh, has the state government announced something with regards to how these kids can travel? Or is there yes. a postponement or a deferment of these exams that kids would be, you know, preparing for? And everything yes. seems to be going haywire. Yes, obviously. 
the madras university has uh, jurisdiction over the northern district and also anna university has also got affiliated colleges throughout the uh, state including the northern district therefore both the uh, institutions have uh, uh, announced uh, uh, reorganization and the uh, re uh, postponement of their examination semester examination which are underway and uh, the, uh, the, the, the next date will be announced later uh, the tamil nadu public service commission has uh, organized some interviews for some direct recruitment of uh, various posts that has also been postponed similar is the case with the tamil nadu teachers recruitment board and uh, several other well uh, examinations like the veterinary college examinations have also been postponed uh, okay so the uh, as far as the highway uh, connecting chennai are concerned highway uh, uh, from all directions 360 directions are all inundated and the transport is very thin only uh, skeletal tra uh, tra public transport is being operated due to the current situation Yeah, even the suburban train, electric train, has got severely affected. Completely shut down from the uh, uh, on the route of uh, Chennai and uh, Tiruvallur districts like Arakkonam and all. And the uh, uh, other side, uh, Chennai to Chengalpattu is also severely affected. The frequency has been reduced. Okay. Chennai metro train also, uh, though it is a little bit okay, but uh, the frequency has been brought down. and the many uh, metro stations have been declared out of bound because of water logging in and around the station okay so not all the stations yes okay okay jay singh we'll leave it there you take good care of yourself stay indoors we'll come Thank back you. to you for more updates on that particular story there in the southern state of tamil nadu well still to come on dd india news hour prime minister to unveil shivaji maharaj statue and witness granda op demo at the at sindhu durg on navy day in an f4 aircraft crashes in telangana two pilots dead and commander of sri lankan army lays a wreath at the national war memorial लंबे रक्तपात भरे युग का अंत धारा 370 के समाप्त होने से फॉर डेकेड्स एंड डेकेड्स डाउनटाउन एरिया ऑफ श्रीनगर हैज ऑलवेज बीन सिंबॉलिक ऑफ अनरेस्ट टर्बुलेंस टर्मोइल डिस्टरबेंसेस एंड एवरीथिंग दैट हैज टू डू विद द डिस्ट्रक्शन पहले तो महीने में 20 दिन होता था हड़ताल अब नहीं होती आई एम राइट नाउ स्टैंडिंग इन द मिडिल ऑफ द जामा मस्जिद मार्केट एंड दिस इज हाउ वीक डे हियर लुक्स लाइक दिन को हो गए एक दो करोड़ टर्नओवर टर्नओवर है बिल्कुल कैश टर्नओवर बंद क्या बंद ये दुकान ऑला टू बिल्कुल ठीक है बिल्कुल ठीक है कुछ नहीं होता है कश्मीर तो बेनजीर है हीरा है दंगा फसाद तो नहीं है द मेकिंग ऑफ द नया कश्मीर और न्यू कश्मीर यू वॉचिंग डी इंडिया न्यूज आर एम अनिल थॉमस इंडियन प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी एक्सटेंडेड इज ग्रीटिंग ऑन दिन ऑफ इंडियन नेवी डे and took to the social media where he wrote on navy day best wishes to all the personnel of the indian navy their commitment to safeguarding our seas is a testament to their unwavering dedication to duty and love for our nation i look forward to joining the navy day program at sindhu durg in maharashtra later today the place has a close association with chhatrapati shivaji maharaj whose efforts to build a strong navy are well known Well India is celebrating Navy Day today and is grateful to the Navy for their outstanding service and devotion in providing maritime security to the country Ships first a game changer for the Indian Navy enhancing what came before 
shaping what is now. And in the future. A combat ready. Credible. Cohesive. Well, nestled between the coastline of Mumbai and Goa, Sindhu Durg Fort is all set for Navy Day celebrations. This year, it's even more special as Prime Minister Narendra Modi will be a part of the operational demonstration of Navy Day celebrations. Prime Minister Modi will also unveil the statue of Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj at uh, the fort today. The Indian Navy is all set for the operational display on the occasion of the Navy Day. Navy Day is celebrated every year on December 4th to commemorate the successful execution of the mighty Operation Trishul by the Indian Navy at Karachi port in 1971. In the operation, Pakistan got divided and Bangladesh became a new independent nation. The Navy's operational demonstration this year is going to showcase India's self-reliance, Prime Minister Narendra Modi will be a part of this historic ceremony and the world will see the cutting-edge technology and the might of the Indian Navy. 2023 has been a remarkable year for our nation. Last one year has left a remarkable wake. And in this period, our ships, submarines and aircraft have sustained a high operational tempo, undertaking missions and tasks encompassing military, diplomatic, constabulary and benign roles. Our units are mission deployed across the Indian Ocean region and beyond to protect and promote our national interests. The event will see the participation of 20 warships along with MiG-29 and 40 light combat aircraft from the naval fleet. A combat beach reconnaissance and attack demo will be conducted by the Indian Navy's Marine Commandos. There will also be a performance by the Naval Band, Hornpipe Dance by the SCC Cadets, Laser Show and a grand program of illumination of ships at the harbour. The demonstration is being organised at the Sindhu Durg Fort. The fort was built by Maratha ruler Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj in 1660. It is a golden chapter in India's rich maritime history. On the occasion of Navy Day, Prime Minister Narendra Modi will also unveil a grand statue of Shivaji in the nearby Jodhpur fort. The Sindhu Durg city is gearing up to welcome Prime Minister Modi. A sand art on Chhatrapati Shivaji has also been crafted. Nausena din ke liye sculptures bana rahe, sand sculptures. Or yahan pe mere piche jo aap dekh sakte wo Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj, jo father of Indian Navy, jo jinko kaha jata hai. Ham unka portrait bana rahe. Uske baad uske bagel me Navy Day ka logo hoga. Or us taraf do aur portrait, do aur sand sculptures hamne bana hai. Ek ship ka hai aur ek aur bada logo jo is event ko dashata hai. This is the first time that the Navy Day celebrations are being held away from a naval base. Last year, on the occasion of Navy Day, Prime Minister had unveiled the new flag of Navy, which had the seal of Shivaji Maharaj on it. Ajay Mishra's report for DD India. Well, the Chief of the Indian Navy Staff, Admiral R. Hari Kumar, extended his warm greetings to the citizens on the occasion of Indian Navy Day today. On the occasion of Navy Day, my heartfelt greetings and compliments to all citizens of our great nation. Navy Day is not merely a celebration, it's a reaffirmation of Bharatiya Nausena's unwavering commitment to secure Bharat's sovereignty and growing maritime interests. This is a day to remember the contribution of our personnel during Op Trident, a glorious moment in Bharatiya Nausena's illustrious history, as well as to honour the supreme sacrifices of our valiant heroes who enabled Bharat's decisive victory during the 1971 war. It's an occasion to express gratitude to our veterans who have acted as the guiding light for Bharatiya Nausena to evolve into a combat-ready, credible, cohesive and future-proof force in service of the nation. Bharat's inherent maritime character and geostrategic location in the Indian Ocean defines our status 
as a major maritime nation whose growth and prosperity in Kartavya Kal is inevitably linked to the oceans. Towards guaranteeing safety and stability of the maritime domain, Bharti Nausena, as the principal manifestation of our nation's maritime power, ensures secure and efficient use of our maritime geography and capabilities. Our core purpose remains readiness for war, to win across the conflict spectrum by focusing on sustained operations, enhanced domain awareness, meticulous maintenance, efficient logistics, professional personnel, and combat-ready operational platforms. Bharati Nausena stands ready to protect, promote, preserve, and pursue our maritime interests wherever they may be. In the past year, while we have remained present, persistent, and prepared to deter our adversaries, Bharati Nausena has also contributed immensely towards being the preferred security partner and the first responder in the region, underpinned by the tenet of collective maritime competence. We have taken the lead in strengthening bridges of friendship with our friends and partners towards ensuring regional maritime security, guided by a shared vision and mutual trust. This cooperation has been equally pursued internally as well. We have proactively partnered with many national agencies to counter challenges that affect Bharat's security and prosperity. Bharati Nausena recognizes its responsibility in the region and will continue to be the pillar around which a combined force for good could be built. In everything that we do as a service, our men and women in whites remain our biggest asset. And it is because of their selfless service dedication and commitment that Bharati Nausena has always emerged victorious, no matter how tough or challenging the circumstances may be. Bharati Nausena is proud of its workforce and is confident of remaining operationally ready, mission deployed and combat capable as we sail into the future. Going ahead, the Navy will remain committed to the ideals of perform reform and transform, as articulated by our Honorable Prime Minister. This mantra guides us to not only perform exceptionally well with our present capabilities, but also to reform our processes and infrastructure to meet future challenges. We aim to transform ourselves into a Navy that is fully Atmanirbha by 2047, guided by innovation and indigenization. So as we commemorate the Navy Day, on behalf of all uniformed and civilian personnel of the Bharati Nausena, I would like to assure our citizens that Bharati Nausena will remain the most potent deterrent for Bharat's adversaries. And if forced into a conflict, we will emerge victorious, always and every time, striking fear and if required ordinance right through our adversary's heart. Jai Bharat, Shano Varan. Well, two Indian Air Force pilots were killed in a trainer aircraft crash in India's southern region of Hyderabad. The incident took place during a training sortie on the Pilatus P-7's PC-7 MK-2 aircraft. No damage to any civil life or property has been reported. The Indian Air Force has said that a court of inquiry has been ordered to ascertain the cause of the accident. Still to come on DD India News Hour. Israel expands ground attack in southern Gaza. The US senior delegation to visit Israel for post war Gaza talks. into opportunity, transforming ideas into action.
stories of real change tales of sustainable solution this series is going to tell stories of such change makers watch change makers on dd india in a world that never stops where information shapes our reality one app stands out helps you stay ahead of time introducing the dd india app your gateway to a world of news right at your fingertips your most trusted source of news goes global goes digital explore a world of options top stories live updates in-depth analysis and more stay informed wherever you are real time alerts keep you ahead of the curve always the dd india app connecting you to the world one story at a time Download now and explore the world of knowledge, insights, and authentic information. You're watching DD India News R. I'm Anil Thomas. Winter session of Parliament begins. Indian Prime Minister Modi asks parliamentarians to have in-depth discussion on bills and ensure best suggestions. India celebrates Navy Day at the Sindhu Durg Sea Fort in Maharashtra. Prime Minister to attend Navy Day celebrations. Cyclone Migjom intensifies into a severe cyclonic storm. Indian city of Chennai flooded. Car submerged. Airport operations halted amid severe rain. And Indian stock markets buoyed by the state assembly election results. Sensex zooms 1,000 points. Nifty crossed the 20,600 point mark. Gold hits all time high. Well, updates now on the, rush, uh, on the Israel Hamas armed conflict. Israel has expanded ground operations there in southern Gaza to neutralize terror group Hamas. Hamas clashed with Israeli troops near the southern city of Khan Yunus on Sunday. Urgent evacuation orders were also issued to the residents in the area. The Israeli army has said it has killed a Hamas commander with an airstrike in Gaza. The renewed conflict follows the conclusion of a seven-day pause in the Israeli-Hamas armed conflict. Israeli ground forces are operating against Hamas in all of the Gaza Strip as per the Israeli Defense Forces spokesperson. Red Admiral Daniel Hagari has said that forces are coming face to face with terrorists and neutralizing them. While Hagari also clarified that the ships from uh, Yemen's Houthi movement claim to have attacked in the Red Sea earlier in the day had no connection to the state of Israel. The IDF continues to extend its ground operation against Hamas centers in all of the Gaza Strip. In all of the Gaza Strip, where there is a Hamas center, the IDF is operating. The forces are fighting face to face with terrorists and killing them. Well, the U.S. has warned it will consider all appropriate responses after several commercial vessels came under attack in the Red Sea. It blamed Yemen's uh, Iran-backed Houthi rebels who claimed the attack to Israeli ships over the war in Gaza. Sally Patterson has more. Rand said on Sunday there had been four attacks against three separate commercial vessels. The ships have been operating in international waters in the southern Red Sea. The USS Kearney, an American warship, responded to distress calls and provided as assistance. These attacks, Defense Department officials say, represent a direct threat to international commerce and maritime security. And while the attacks were carried out by Houthis, a Yemen rebel group, the US has every reason to believe they were fully enabled by Iran according to the release. Earlier, the Houthi group said its navy had attacked two Israeli ships, Unity Explorer and Number 9, with an armed drone and a naval missile. The rebel group claims the ships were targeted after they rejected warnings. 
A Houthi spokesperson said they will continue to prevent Israeli ships from navigating the Red Sea until Israeli aggression in the Gaza Strip stops. It's the latest in a series of attacks on vessels in the region since fighting began in early October between Israel and Hamas. Last week, the U.S. warned Iran over unsafe and unprofessional drone maneuvers near an American aircraft carrier. Sally Patterson in New York reporting for DD India. Well, China's military on Monday said a U.S. combat ship illegally entered waters adjacent to the Second Thomasol, a disputed South China Sea. The spokesperson also said that the U.S. deliberately disrupted the South China Sea and seriously violated China's sovereignty. On Sunday, the Philippine Coast Guard deployed two of its vessels in South China Sea after monitoring an alarming increase in the number of Chinese maritime militia vessels at a reef within the country's exclusive economic zone. Ukraine's Air Force has claimed that Russia launched 23 drones and a cruise missile in an overnight attack on Ukraine. It said that the anti-aircraft defense was deployed in at least nine regions of Ukraine. In another claim, Ukrainian officials said that fresh Russian shelling killed at least three people. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky has reported intense battles at dozens of frontline locations with the most severe battles in the eastern town of Mirianka, Adavinka and Bakhmut, but also reported heavy fighting in the Kharkiv region and in the South Kherson region. The regional governor there, Alexander Protukin, has said that shelling has injured three women and damaged the facets of two nearby hospital buildings. Ukraine, meanwhile, has accused Russia of committing a war crime after a grainy video on social media appeared to show several soldiers shooting two surrendering military personnel who emerged from a dugout at gunpoint. Ukrainian human rights ombudsman Dmitro Lubinets said that an execution of those who surrender is a war crime and it is another violation of the Geneva Conventions and disrespect for international humanitarian law. Russia denies committing war crimes during its 21-month-old war in Ukraine. Kiev says Russia regularly violates the rules of war. Well, Lead India's correspondent Vinod Kumar uh, joining us uh, on that COP28 deliberations taking place uh, in Dubai this afternoon. Vinod, good afternoon. Uh, you know, how does one take a look at the deliberations that now continue at COP28? What's the latest there on the ground? Hi, Anil. Today is the fifth day of the COP28. And as it unfolds, we can see that finance is taking the center stage today group of uh, ministers from the finance sector from various countries are convening today here for discussions on the modalities of how to uh, fund the future uh, for, for the future climate action speaking of which we should speak about four different categories of fund one is the green climate fund the adaptation fund the least developed countries fund and the loss and damage fund going to cop 28 the adaptation fund has so far received 1.3 billion in community contributions from 26 developed countries adaptation fund is used uh, for adapting to the, uh, the the climate catastrophe that we are ex we are expecting, like building new resilient uh, grain varieties, new resilient uh, uh, infrastructure like sea walls, and just like adaptation fund, we have the least developed uh, countries fund, which is also created in 2001, and uh, uh, they are there to support the 46 poorest countries of the world, and it's operated by the Global Environment Facility. In COP28, it has so far received 2 billion in community contributions from 29 uh, richest countries. Created in 2010, the Green Climate Fund is the largest multilateral climate fund ever created for climate action. Fortunately, yesterday, United States have committed around $3 billion uh, for this Green Climatic Fund. And uh, Czech Republic, Switzerland, Port uh, Portugal had, com had, com had a combined pledge of 158 million. US dollars. So 
we okay. currently exceeded the total targets by $2 billion. And the most uh, expected and the most anticipated outcome here in COP28 is the uh, approval and the channeling of the loss and damage fund. Loss and damage fund was in principle approved last year at Shamal Sheikh, but in this year, in, even in the first day itself, $450 million is committed for the loss and uh, uh, damage fund. As we can see in Chennai, this climate catastrophe is happening. So already countries are experiencing uh, the uh, the worst phases of the climate change. In order to address the waste, the worst phases of the climate change, and in order to mitigate it, the loss and damage fund has been created. And yes, we got 450 million. Is it enough? Uh, I would say no, because United States have only committed uh, 17 million dollars, and uh, the exact method of the operationalization of this fund is still not clear. World, World Bank is supposed to be the custodian of this fund, and. Uh, the World Bank stewardship include, uh, should include increased transparency as the overhead cost associated with this fund as determined by the World Bank is quite high. Okay. The uh, COP28 presidency, the United Arab Emirates, have created the largest and unprecedented fund for climate action, a $30 billion uh, climate action fund called Altera. It, is, it now stands as the world's largest private investment vehicle anywhere in the world. And before concluding, uh, it should be unfair if I conclude uh, without mentioning Mia Motley, the uh, the Prime Minister of Barbados, who was instrumental in creating the Bridgetown initiatives as a voice to the Global South, she told that we have to completely rewire and reform the international financial system so, as, uh, so, so that the sustainable development goals of the UN can be met, as well as real fund and real liquidity can flow from the, re the richer nations to the poorer okay. nations in, in adaptation, mitigation and loss and damage. These are the, uh, these are the updates from, COP uh, from the fifth day of the COP28 here at Dubai. Okay, uh, Vinod, put this into perspective for us. What's the goal of COP28? First, from a point, uh, especially when it comes to global stock taking. Secondly, from a point on expectations on loss and damage. And finally, political agreements that are agreed upon in COP28. See, under the presidency of um, UAE, there is a consensus on the political agreement. On okay. global stock tech, it is said to happen here. 2015, we had the Paris Agreement in which uh, uh, countries have set their own national determined goals on how much uh, greenhouse ga gases they can emit and how much mitigation and adaptation efforts that can they, they can do. This is the first, the Paris Agreement had mandated every five year a review. This is the first time that such a review is going to happen. And that the, the name of the review is Global Stock Tech. Only after COP28 is over, that is on the day 13, on December 12th, we'll have a clear picture of what really uh, transpired between the leaders and what where we stand when it comes to uh, Global Stock Tech. Uh, and unprecedented actions have already taken on the political front. For example, yesterday we had a faith pavilion here. Uh, and we had the first time we had a he dedicated health day and the gender day here. And in the health day, we have pledged around uh, $777 million for neglected tropical diseases and another $900 million for uh, last mile workers, like, like our community health workers, ASHA workers in India. Last mile workers are there everywhere. And um, uh, the global leaders are all coming together on a consensus. Uh, the only one thing that I feel that conspicuously absent is the absence of the world leaders of China and uh, United, uh, United States. Uh, only the vice pres presidential rank uh, delegation was here. The re leaders were not here. So we have to see uh, how this will uh, convert it into real commitments and real pledging. And second, as I mentioned earlier, the, uh, the operation, operationalization of the loss and damage fund. World Bank is giving a very high overhead on implementation and uh, and the maintaining of the fund. When we uh, look at it from the perspective of the Bridgetown Initiative, which was earlier declared uh, April earlier this year, yes, we need to smoothen up the mechanism. We need to make sure that the fund flowing will be frictionless. And we also okay. have many ambitious initiatives. To, yeah. Yeah. Okay, we'll leave it there. Thank you. Appreciate, uh, you know, we've got that cyclone story that's building up. Uh, uh, we need to cut across for any uh, emergency update there on that particular story there. Update coming in uh, as that particular cyclone that we are talking about hitting the southern part of India. Uh, it has been warned in many districts of Andhra Pradesh. The Chief Minister of the State, Jagan Mohan Reddy, has reviewed uh, with the district collector there, Ranjit Basha, and other officials today. And we've got uh, Donnie Michael, the commander of the Coast Guards there, Director Environment, uh, joining us uh, uh, this afternoon uh, to get us the latest. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, welcome to NewsR. Uh, 
you know, what's the situation on the ground, especially when it comes to rescue and relief operation, and how is the co Coast Guard ready uh, in handling any untoward event that takes place, you know, after the landfall happens? Uh, good afternoon to you. Uh, this is Donnie Michael here. Uh, we have been very busy for the past three days. We got uh, information about the formation of the Cyclone Mission about a week back. So our responsibility is in our maritime zones that the sea areas extending up to 200 nautical miles. So we know uh, the fishermen are vulnerable to operate in these heavy seas. So what we first thing we did is to send our ships and aircraft to warn these fishermen to go back to their base ports and fishing harbors and to save themselves and their properties firstly. So we have been doing this for the past one week. And we also have our short stations, radar stations, located at every 50 to 100 kilometers, which were providing warning right from Karaikal, Puducherry, uh, Mahabalipuram, Chennai, Nellore, and the entire Andhra coast, warning all the fishermen. The second uh, immediate concern for the Coast Guard was to uh, protect the uh, ships and the, uh, uh, the crew which are operating on the offshore platforms. So we told, informed the ports uh, to, uh, lay, to allow the ships to leave the area to go to the ships have uh, you know, they can move to a safer area well in time, so they have been moved. And as of yesterday, there were still some ships operating from certain ports, which we want them to move away. And due to that, I'm glad to say there has been no casualties at sea um, so far. And now the cyclone is laid centered slightly north of Chennai, about 90 kilometers, and it's moving slowly at a speed of 10 kilometers per hour and likely to hit uh, the Andhra, South Andhra coast uh, tomorrow by early morning. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm very sure there won't be any casualties coming from the sea, but we also want, uh, want the state governments and the coastal district uh, collectors uh, regarding the inundation, which is likely to happen because of the heavy rains which are expected to lash the coastal towns uh, for the next uh, 12 to 24 hours. Okay, Mr. Michael, uh, you know, the Coast Guard has been very efficient, especially when it comes to, you know, helping uh, along with the NDRF teams in these kind of crises. But looking at this particular, you know, this particular landfall that's expected today, what's the situation on the ground uh, when it comes to handling, uh, you know, rescue and relief operations there? You know, uh, about this entire procedure, I would ask, uh, not exactly with regards to Coast Guard, but with regards to both the states, the, the state of Tamil Nadu as well as Andhra Pradesh? Uh, uh, yes, it's a good question. Uh, um, the state government uh, has a, a missionary to put in place, uh, which includes the State Disaster Relief Force and the NDRF, and they had plans already put in place. The immediate concern is was to allow the natural uh, waters which accumulate through the rivers and to allow them to reach the sea. And in certain areas where the blockages were there, they were already act, taking some actions uh, so that the drains will flow, uh, you know, uh, as per what we expected. But in certain areas, uh, we didn't never expected uh, to lash out so much. It's been, I, I heard it's more than 200 mm in the past 24 hours, uh, which actually is a cause of concern. And um, the people were warned earlier and the state government has declared a holiday today at Chennai, and so is the Andhra Pradesh government is taking necessary action for the South Coastal Districts. And we are I already formed, um, in anticipation, uh, disaster relief teams, which is actually consisting of some uh, rescue inflatable boats with the essential items and life jackets and life rafts, which they can provide to people in uh, real need. And uh, people have been warned, and I'm getting some information from uh, uh, from uh, various parts that uh, people have been, uh, you know, staying safe in their residential areas, and have been warned not to go into uh, the streets. Okay. And to more preventive actions also been taken by uh, by not pro providing the electricity, which actually may hampering many, but actually is the preventive measures.
Okay. Uh, this is all the actions have been taken by the state government. We are ready to provide any other assistance as they are asked for. Okay, one final word from you before I let you go. Looking at coastal Andhra Pradesh, you know, that's expected to experience heavy to very heavy rainfall, including, you know, extremely heavy rainfall at isolated places there, you know, over the next two days. Uh, having said that, you know, how difficult is it, especially to ask people to move to safer areas? You know, looking at, uh, you know, the crop that's ready for them, is it difficult or do people generally cooperate and are ready to leave their land and move and save themselves? Um, um, yes, uh, the people have got used to it. You can see okay. this is uh, happening over the years and um, uh, there were several cyclonic storms which passed over this year, but not um, as regular. But this Michuang has brought in heavy rains. So, I, uh, to my knowledge, um, the people are cooperating with the government um, in the, uh, giving them, uh, taking their warnings and already taken uh, precautionary actions to moving in the higher grounds. And uh, that's, uh, you know, that's a positive sign because we already uh, seen them, you know, moving their boats inland so that there's no damage to the boats also. But what's happening inside, because with regard to agriculture lands and all, I'm not very much aware about it. Uh, but at sea, it's actually uh, a, a pretty good sign that um, not much property damage is taking place. Not too much trees also have fallen because the winds are not more than 35 knots, but the rains have been heavy. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to keep you waiting. Thank you. Appreciate you joining us. Donnie Michael, they're joining us, uh, giving us the update. Uh, the director, environment of the Indian Coast Guard, joining us, getting us the latest on what's happening there on the ground zero, especially when it comes to rescue and relief operations there by the Indian Coast Guard. We'll leave it there. Moving forward now to the markets and uh, gold hitting an all-time high. The benchmark index, Sensex and Nifty, opened at a fresh all-time high on Monday, aided by strong domestic macroeconomic data and elevated bets on a U.S. rate cut in March, while analysts saw momentum picking up in the ongoing rally after the resounding win for the ruling party in the three state elections. The NSE Nifty, that's the broader index, has risen close to 2% as we speak. It's crossed that 20,650-point mark, notching a record high for a second session in a row. The S&P BSE Sensex was up 1.64%, an all-time high of 68,587 points. This was in the morning. Things looking still brighter there, but four both for Nifty as well as for Sensex there. Gold also hitting an all-time high. So all in all, a great day there uh, on the Forex as well as uh, on uh, the Forex markets today where the gold hitting an all-time high. And uh, the Sensex as we speak, 20, 000, uh, the Nifty as we speak, 20,660 up almost 1.94%, 392 points off. The BSE Sensex up 1,218 points, uh, hovering at around 68,699, uh, 6, uh, 68,700 points at this point of time. So clearly the market's there celebrating that particular uh, positive position, especially on the political front, and a good rally there being seen there in both the Sensex and Nifty. Recently, Prime Minister Narendra Modi flew a sortie in a Tejas fighter jet. Tejas is indigenously designed, developed, and manufactured by the Hindustan Aeronautics Limited, or HAL. DD India's correspondent Shubindu Ghosh speaks with the chairman and managing director of HAL, CB Ananta Krishnan, on Prime Minister's historic flight and HAL's role in making India self-reliance in defense. In fact, the more and more confidence and the trust which the Honorable Prime Minister has within the country's capabilities, the responsibility of HAL also goes up to that extent. 
now that we have uh, exhibited uh, our uh, certain of our ra range of indigenous product it is also uh, imperative on our part to rise up to the occasion and see that we deliver the not only the products well in time the aircrafts well in time to the customers but also we deliver quality products and towards that we are taking quite a lot of initiatives to see that the capacities and the capabilities of the company are enhanced so that we meet both the delivery timelines as well as also to deliver quality products you can watch that exclusive interview of the HAL CMD that's today, the 4th of December at 8.30 p.m. Indian Standard Time, 1500 hours GMT only on DD India. Well, that's all in this edition of DD India News Hour, but let us know your thoughts on the news of the day. You can connect with us on Facebook, X and also Instagram. We're going to be back with more news as it breaks here on DD India. I'm Anil Thomas from all of us here in Delhi. Thanks for watching. DD India News Hour.